Welcome back to Force Education. This is Ed. Today I'm going to be talking about Bingo by Nanogenomics. Now, I've covered a lot about this one previously, but this one will be a whole video that you don't need the other videos to make an educated decision. If you would like to watch the technical analysis part, it's split into due diligence and technical analysis. The links to those are in the description below, or you can watch the entire thing here. Make sure to drop a like this video to help this channel grow, subscribe, and leave vacations on. Let's jump right into it. Bio Nanogenomics. If you haven't heard about this one here, well, you might have heard, heard about their Sapphire product. Now, they have a symposium um, they're participating in that's in January 11th to 15th, so in somewhat around two weeks from now. Now, we're not going to cover about the conference, etc. We want to uncover basically everything they have, as well as the kind of recent catalysts that fueled that movement that we saw in the previous few days. And so Sapphire speed update is now 96 human genomes per week. That's the basically uh, rate of analysis. Now in the media, if you recall back all the way back mid-year, uh, they had acquisitions of CLIA certified labs to its novel technology platforms. By Nanogenomics sees encouraging results from study of Sapphire. Now Sapphire here, this product they have has been uh, basically a game changer in that field. And I'm going to cover uh, a little bit in depth, but before doing so, let's look into their products. Bio Nano Chips, this built in, uh, built using nano ch channel technology, the Bio Nano Chips for the Sapphire and the Iris systems linearize DNA, enabling high speed, high throughout optical genome mapping and structural variation detection for a variety of applications, including human and clinical research. Now, they also have a sample kits that they sell with isolating and labeling. And they also have the Binana data solutions. So that basically includes a complete studio of hard or suit of, hard, of hardware and software for end-to-end -end experiment management analysis, bioinformatic processing, along with convenient web-based management and monitoring tooling system. Now, they also have a service basically uh, for Binana data options. And that includes basically them analyzing the data for you themselves and they have different pricings for instance but moving on the one that we're really interested in is the sapphire product so the sapphire product is not including into their uh, bio uh, bio nano data services you can go in here and find it out under services quite interesting to read but today our focus is on sapphire so sapphire here is an optical remote mapping and basically it is powered by Sapphire and it reveals what's missing in your research rapidly identifying genomic variation like never before. And to cut it short, it basically you can think about it as a one stop all for DNA analysis. And here's their brochure and we're going to cover uh, bit by bit by it. So first off, the Sapphire system by Bionanogenomics is a genome imaging tool for high speed, high throughput structural variant detection and analysis with exceptional sensitivity and specific. Uh, specificity. So there we go. The, the Sapphire system is ideal for replacing traditional uh, cytogenetics methods, unbiased genome-wide structural variance and detection, and de novo genome assembly across multiple species. And they have wide range of applications, and that really includes all, anywhere from undiagnosed genetic disorder to solid tumor research to hematologic. Uh, I can't even read that word. I'm not going to even try malignancies. There you go. Genetic engineering studies, evolutionary biology, gene discovery and therapy, cell line stability, reference genome assembly. And so the way it works really is you can either insert or you delete a part of a genome uh, larger than 500 BP with a 99% sensitivity. You can also invert a part of it. You can also duplicate. You can balance and unbalance translocation. And you can also fractional copy number of variations. And so the Sapphire product makes detection, detecting structural variants with high specificity and sensitivity easy and efficient. Moving on, streamlining your workflow and all that stuff. I'm not going to go in depth for it, but moving on quickly here, you can get to see their changes or sorry, the variation of their prep kits and other information, but that is not significant to the Sapphire. So we already have a bit of an idea what the Sapphire product is. And if you were to look into the SSC filing, you'll find it fueled with filings like this one here. 
by nanocustomers practice genome accredited by college American pathologist completing first LDT in the US for constitutional genetic disorder that uses a whole genome analysis with sapphire as alternative to chromo, uh, chromosome microarray and carry typing. So the massive thing about this one is that it's the first LDT in the US for constitutional genetic disorder. And bingo here, or bionanogenomics is the ones behind it for their product Sapphire. Now they're not the ones that have done it, but they supplied the tool. And what does that tell you is basically, well, as I said before, this is a game changer. Just to kind of quickly go over basically what they've uh, established here is that the Paraxis uses optical genome mapping, OGM, with Binana Sapphire system as an alternative to traditional methods of, chromo of chromosome microarray and karyotyping, as they seek to improve the rate of clinical diagnosis for patients with genetic diseases. CMA and KT together typically diagnose 30 to 50% of patients tested. Recent studies found that this OGM with Sapphire is concordant with CMA and KT and also diagnoses a significant fraction, 18 to 25% of the patients who could not be diagnosed with traditional methods. And so that is definitely an improvement. Now, 18 to 25% compounded with uh, what seems to be somewhere around 50 to 70%. That is quite significant. If you take the 70% in there, you multiply it by 0.25. I mean, that is insane. So for me, that's somewhere around, I believe, 18 or something percent. And that does make a difference. And so you can see, get to see that sensitivity here is a plus. Publication reveals side-by-side -side comparison that, that methods use passivio sequencing detects only 72% of the large structural variants detected by optical genome mapping with Sapphire. And so there you go. Once more, we get to see that Sapphire is more accurate and more sensitive to data. By nanogenomics users present with Sapphire system as a novel diagnostic tool for hematological malignancies uh, malig at ASH 2020. So that's another word that I can't pronounce, apparently. Uh, engineers, we can't really pronounce pharma. Nonetheless, so we get to see that this product, Sapphire, is really useful. It has a lot of applications. Let's quickly go through it towards institutional buyers. How's institutions feeling about this one? Now, I've heard about this one being one of ARK Investments. Uh, now, I don't see an institutional buying here. and It's not clear exactly how much they still have. But it looks like, in general... The last few transactions are positive on this one. Um, and so it looks like institutions are liking this one, but very cautious about this one. Insider buyers, we don't see any additional buyings in here. So we'll take that as it is. Now, a quick thing here. I also try to look if ARC is one of the insiders in here. Now, I don't see that it is, but we'll keep that as it is. Next thing on is their statistics and your valuation. So price over sales you're seeing at 2790. SP 500 average is around three, two to three. Price per book is 1343. SP average is also around two to three. So you get to see it is way over that market uh, size. Now, or sorry, uh, the valuation the average. Now, the next thing we want to look at is their financials. So a quick overview from 2017 to 2020. Revenues have been stable, or sorry, 2019. Revenues have been stable. Their net income here has been a little bit on and off. So they're still in a rough patch in 2019. So that is some of the things we want to look at. Now, total revenue here in terms of quarters, we get to see that in the last quarter, there is a lot of improvement compared to the first two quarters. Now, it's not compared to the 2019 one. So that one was still good in the end of the year. Now, operating income or loss, it's actually one of the worst it's been ever, around negative 10 million, so a 10 million loss, uh, really fueled with a big part of selling general administration fees, etc. So research development is still stable. It's just that part of their uh, balance sheet is what's hurting them the most. Net income has been somewhat stable. Now, the quick thing here is how much cash do they have? And as of this quarter here, they have around 18.86. So that is cash and cash equivalent. So that means they have two quarters before they either fix the revenues or having to either get financial uh, 
aids or somewhat of a public offering or a private offering. So the next thing we want to look at here is technical analysis. So let's jump right into that before doing so. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please consider doing so. A lot of you amazing folks watch my videos back to back, but never click the subscribe button. So please click on that, turn notifications on, it helps my channel. If you'd like to join our Discord server, that is basically like a chat room, you can find that in the description below and no pumping allowed in there. So taking a quick look into a one week perspective, Let's take a quick look. ADX here doesn't show us much. Willing percent R shows it's highly overbought on a one week perspective. Now MACD here looks like it's uh, somewhat overbought. Now also on momentum, it looks like in that sense, it is positive momentum and that's bullish. Now moving averages here do look quite interesting. They do look they're going from bearish to somewhat bullish. Now, we need to look a little bit into a one day because it's only the last two weeks that we've seen a really massive movement. Moving averages are extremely bullish. A golden star was seen yesterday and it did really play today. Of course, there was news fueling yesterday, but it really did play through. ADX shows in a 39.47 and that shows in a very, very strong trend that is not likely to stop at this level. Now, the next thing we're looking at is William Percent R is highly, highly overbought and MACD hasn't stabilized yet, but it's showing that there is a lot of momentum and there's a lot of potential here. Now, on a two hour perspective, what we get to see is extremely bullish. Now, the ADX here says, hey, hold on, there might actually be a significant pullback at somewhat sometime soon. So you need to be really careful about this because a pullback is very likely. Now, the William percent R sits still at overbought and the MACD looks really strong and the momentum looks even better. Now, on a moving average band perspective, volumes have been pouring in in the last two days at least. There was a drop in volume for one of the days. For the sake of argument, this one is going to trade between 66 cents on the top, 60 cents in the middle, 54 cents in the bottom. But the moving average band is actually increasing upwards and that is a positive thing. Now, stochastic fast and stochastic slow are both showing that there is a really large potential for this one to see another leg up. Now, Fibonacci retracements here, you can get to see a support at $1.22, uh, 22, 102, 87, and 72. Now, using a price line action and going just a little bit further back, we can start drawing some of the price line actions. And some of them here. We get to see that there is a current support sitting at the dollar 30. Below there, we're looking at dollar 24. Below there, you're looking at 116, 98 cents, 91 cents, 73 cents, going all the way down to 62, and then to 45. Significant resistance is here. We're looking up at uh, quickly dollar 92. So from dollar 92 we can move on to dollar 95 dollar 95 to 235 235 to 271 291 three dollars and then 316 and all the way up to 383 if it does break that 320 mark you can get to see a really massive jump to the four or five bucks now ed what do you think about this one I am a huge fan of the Sapphire product. I do believe it's a game changer. Now, one of the things we want to look at here is what about their compliance? So their compliance in their 10Q, it does show actually that uh, they're having a little bit of problem in that sense of compliance. Their compliance is supposed to be achieved by uh, December 28th. And here on the screen, I'm going to share it quickly. So on the compliance, it's December 28th. So I don't understand. I didn't see an SEC filing for an extension, but we are on December 29th and I don't see it delisted. So there is a high potential that it does actually have 180 day extension as they do say that they're looking to get that 180 day extension in general. Uh, company may be afforded an additional 180 days extension. And so in that sense, we can say, okay, a reverse plate may be not likely. I mean, this is not, this is day one above a dollar, right? It hasn't closed yesterday above a dollar. We got nine business days to go. Can it hold? I do think that this one is probably going to close higher tomorrow, or at least it's going to still see a massive push. There is another leg up. Now, as an investment, I would love to see it accumulate. I would always count on 
putting in a little bit lower or sorry counting uh, on adding more shares in general but the one thing that scares me is that clients as soon as they're in compliant i'm happy to put an investment in it but if you're trading you can actually see a bit more gains tomorrow but at some point there probably will be a pullback how far the pullback is that will be determined on uh whether this one was pumped or was it organi organically moved up now i do think that this one has a lot of potential and i do think probably two or three years from now it's going to be way higher than this level trading you can probably trade it for two three days more than that i would wait for an investment opportunity where they do have compliance and it accumulates what do you think about the stock make sure to mention down in the comments below share subscribe and like you have a wonderful day